Hi, in this video, I'll go over how to recognize a CLT problem, a central limit theorem problem, and briefly go over the steps on how to do one. So to understand how to recognize a CLT problem, let's first go over what it says. The CLT is about the sampling distribution. And it says that under the right circumstances or conditions, the sampling distribution of the sample means will be either normal or approximately normal. That normal distribution will have a mean of mu x bar equals to mu and sigma of x bar equals to sigma over square root of m. Let's dig into the practical details of CLT. First of all, we're talking about the sampling distribution. So there has to be a sample. No sample, no CLT. Number two, the conditions must be right. If the conditions are not met, CLT does not apply. What this says is that when you solve a CLT problem, somewhere in your solution, you must check the conditions. They are either the original population is normal, in which case the sampling distribution is exactly normal, or the sample size is large. And our rule of thumb is 30 is considered large, in which case the sampling distribution is approximately normal. The good news is that means as soon as one condition is met, we can use a normal function on our calculator or software. We just have to remember to compute a new standard deviation for use with the normal function. So this is how you recognize a CLT problem. First, there has to be a sample of some size n. Now be careful that the word sample may not appear in the problem though. It may say a group, it may say a bus load or a team of high school competitors. And since CLT about sampling distribution of the sample mean, the question must involve the mean of that group or sample. And finally, the question prompt is about the probability regarding that mean. So that's how you recognize a CLT problem. Now let's quickly go over how we solve one. There are four steps. Step one, you have to recognize that it's a CLT problem. Write it down and also specify the given size n because you want to have it on paper so you can refer back to it later. Step two, check the conditions. Do we have either A, the population is normal, or B, the sample is large enough. Our rule of thumb again is that n is greater than or equal to 30. If the conditions are not met, the CLT does not apply and you cannot do CLT. Except that in this class, what happens is that if the conditions are not met, you must say so on paper, say that the conditions are not met, but then move on anyway, don't stop. And to move on means step three, you do the number crunching. You crunch numbers by using the normal function. On the TI, it's normal CDF. On the Casio, it's NCD. And on stat crunch, it's stat calculators normal. And you will enter the same mean as in the problem, but you must compute a new standard deviation, sigma of x bar equals sigma divided by square root of n. That's the standard deviation you will use in your calculator or software. Finally, step four, answer the question asked. The problem asks a verbal question. You must answer it verbally in the context that was asked. All right, now let's take a look at this problem. Household incomes in a certain city area are approximately normal with a mean of 31,486 and a standard deviation of 8,153. What is the probability that 20 randomly selected households have mean income of more than $40,000? Is it the CLT problem? And how do we solve it? Press pause and think about it. It is a CLT problem because right here, 20 randomly selected households, that's our sample of size n equals 20. The question prompt asks for the probability regarding a mean. So, to do this problem as a CLT problem, I would need to check the conditions. Are the conditions met? Do we have either a normal population or a large enough sample size? Well, in this case, we don't have a large enough sample size, but we do have a population that is approximately normal. 
So I would have to write all of that down in my solution. Then I run normal, but with a new standard deviation. New standard deviation is sigma of x bar is equal to sigma divided by square root of n, and sigma is 8153, and n is 20, so it's 8153 divided by square root of 20. I get this number. I use that in the normal distribution function on either my calculator or my software, and I get an answer. When I get the answer, I must give a verbal response in a complete sentence in the context of this problem, which is the household income in the city area. I would need all four steps to have a complete CLT answer. Now moving on to example two. It's similar, but a little bit different. Press pause, read it, and see if you can tell whether it's a CLT problem. It is not a CLT problem because there isn't a sample or group of N households. The question prompt is about a household income itself, not the mean of some sample. Now, if you think about the variable in this problem, the variable in this problem is household income. So that's X. And the question is about the probability that X is more than 40,000. It's not about some X bar. So it's not a CLT problem. Now let me tell you about a special case. This is when the word mean doesn't appear in a problem, but it's still a CLT problem because usually the question prompt should include the word mean. But mathematically, mean is equal to total divided by n. So when n is fixed, then total and mean are directly related to each other. And asking about the probability of a total is equivalent to asking about the probability of a mean. Example three, it has been estimated that sixth graders in the US carry backpacks with a mean weight of 18.2 pounds and standard deviation of 5.6 pounds. What is the probability that 50 students on a school bus carry backpacks with a total weight of more than 1,000 pounds? Press pause to think about why this is CLT and what are all the numbers that you will use in solving this problem. This is a CLT problem because we have a group of 50 students and the prompt is the probability that the total is over 1,000 pounds. But total greater than 1,000 is the same as if I divide both sides by n, and n is equal to 50, if I divide both sides by 50, is the equivalent to saying that mean is greater than 20. So this is still CLT. You need to check the conditions. You need to compute the new standard deviation and apply it to the normal function to solve for p for the probability of x bar being greater than 20. And once you get that probability, you write the verbal answer in context. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Bye.